Hello everyone, in this video we will talk about caching. We will discuss almost everything about caching we need to know before a system design interview. A cache stores frequently access data in a faster access memory. Say for example, we have a client who is, is requesting for some data to our app server. Then app server basically sends the request to data server and we run some sort of query in our database and finally return the result to our customers, right? If we have a million customers who are requesting for the same data, we will still be making a million calls to our DB server, right? Rather than what we can do, we can store the data in a local memory which is called cache. Then for the first time when a user calls us, we basically get the data from DB and store in cache. Then when the other customer call for the same data, we basically get the data from cache rather than making a call to DB and return back to the caller. This way we can kind of reduce the number of total network calls and also improve the latency. When we talk about caching, we need to talk about two different things which is cache sheet versus cache miss. When customer calls us and we look for data in the cache, if we get the data in the cache, then that is called like cache sheet. That means we found the data in the cache and return that data to the customer without making any call to our database. Again, if customer is calling us for a data and we do not find the data in the cache and we make a call to DB, that is known as like cache miss. That means we didn't find the data in the cache. That's why we made a call to our DB server. There are different types of caches which are used in different places in our computing world. The first one is like CPU cache. We have L1, L2 and L3 types of CPU caches. These are basically very small, uh, expensive and extremely fast cache to store instruction set and data located closer to the CPU core. Then we have main memory cache, also known as like translation loop aside buffer, TLB. This actually caches the mapping between virtual and physical memory address. And then we have disk cache, which is also known as disk buffer cache. It actually sits between disk drive and operating systems uh, file system. Then we have web browser cache. So we actually cache images, styles, and other scripts for frequently visited websites. Number five, we have database cache. There are two types of database caching, query result and buffer pool caches. Then query result basically caches the results for frequently accessed queries. And then we have application level cache, which is kind of like in memory cache to store frequently accessed data and kind of the main thing we actually think about or talk about in our system design interview. So we have many managed caching solutions for this. Memcached and Redis are two popular of them. Then number seven, we have content delivery network CDN cache. So it actually distributes static contents like video, image and static files to multiple geographically distributed S servers. Finally, we have network cache. We can also place some cachings uh, in between our networking setups like proxy servers. So proxy server can cache content and reduce load on origin server. Let's talk about cache eviction policy. The cache is limited, right? Because they are expensive. We cannot have like infinite size of cache. So when a cache is full, we need to free some spaces. We need to remove some items. So which item to remove first? There are different policies. One of them is like LRU, which is like least recently used. Then MRU, most recently used. These are kind of easier to implement. Then we have LFU, least frequently used. That means whatever item was kind of like called or used uh, lowest number of times. For that, we need to maintain a frequency and a little bit kind of complex to implement compared to the previous two. Then we also have FIFO, fast in, fast out. And finally, the RR random replacement who is we don't think maybe the ideal one in a real caching scenario. Now, how to measure cache performance? Say for example, we have implemented cache in our application, right? That's not the end. We need to understand, okay, how our cache is being utilized. To measure the performance of a cache, we need to measure some metrics. One of them is like heat rate or heat ratio. It's basically the number of cache sheets divided by total number of requests multiplied by 100. Then uh, we can also measure the miss rate or miss ratio. Miss ratio 
is equal to number of cash misses divided by total number of cash requests then multiplied by 100 so if the hit rate is kind of higher that means we are doing good and the opposite for miss rate if the miss rate is lower that means we are doing good we can also measure another matrix which is like cash latency time to access data from cash cash consistency or data consistency so we want to make sure our cache data is consistent with actual data store like database, right? There are two types of consistency we usually talk about. One is a strong consistency, which means we have exact same data in our cache as well as in our data store or database at any given time. And we have another term, eventual consistency, which means data are not exactly same at the same time but eventually they will be similar maybe after like some milliseconds or some seconds the data in both places will be the same but it will take some time there are different types of caching strategies one of them is like lazy caching so in lazy caching we basically cache only when data is requested by the caller or the client say for example our client is calling our read api then app server first looks for the data in the cache if it does not get the data in the cache it sends a request to our db server and update the cache and finally return the response back to the client in lazy caching we need to explicitly update cache data when data store changes it is suitable for frequent read and rare write operation say for example we have some sort of solutions where we make only one write per day but we are making thousands of calls per day so in those cases we can use this lazy caching mechanism which is easy to implement there are another types of caching strategy which is write through caching in write through caching cache and data store are updated simultaneously in one single operation say for example we have client we have app server and we have database if client call us for some sort of write api our app server updates the cache as well as updates the db at the same time that means the write operation will be a little bit slower because we will finish two writes then finally return the response back to customer in this write through caching there is no cache misses because the cache is always updated first as a result if any request come to cache it is obvious that it will get the updated data for write through cache write operations become slower as we talked about earlier but we achieve a strong consistency that means the data in our cache and database will always be the same and finally this write through caching is suitable for real time data requirement and low volume of write as we know already the write will be slower where we need like a smaller number of write operations and we need real time data we can apply this write through caching mechanism the next caching strategy is write behind caching so cache is updated first then write operations are buffered and data store is updated asynchronously later say for example we have client again app server with cache and database server when client call our app server for write api what do we do the app server first writes to cache then app server buffer the database operations in memory and re send the response back to customer so what is happening here we are not updating the database at the same call the database update is happening in a separate asynchronous path so this way our write operation becomes a little bit faster compared to the previous one because we are not updating the database we are updating the cache and buffering the write operations or db write operations then sending back the request to client and later in asynchronous path our write to db is happening so the write operations becoming little bit faster but the data are not strongly consistent they are eventually consistent finally this write behind caching is suitable for high volume write operations where data consistency can be sacrificed say for example in some scenarios where we are okay with eventual consistent data but we need like better performance for our write operation we can choose this write behind caching mechanism let's talk about distributed caching so in our large scale systems today sometimes one single centralized cache is not good enough that's why we need distributed caching distributed cache actually stores data in multiple cache nodes or servers and these are kind of by default designed to scale horizontally say for example based on our load we can add any number of 
cache servers. Distributed cache also provides high availability with replication and failover mechanism. It also supports sharding, is not stores a subset of data. Say for example, we have 10,000 of users and we want to cache their data. What do we do? We basically stores the data in different servers. Say for example, first 100 user in one server, second 100 user in another server, something like this. Also, when we have multiple replica of our cache servers, we also need to think about cache coherence mechanism. So this thing like distributed caching has some obvious benefits, right? But it's not easy to implement. There are so many complex things we need to think about. That's why we need some sort of managed distributed caching solutions. And luckily, we have some solutions in market already. Memcached and Redis are two of them and very popular. Let's talk about uh, Memcached and Redis a little bit. In Memcached, this is basically an in-memory distributed cache and Redis is also in memory distributed cache, but it has some other benefits like it can parse this data long term. So some application can use this Redis as their final data storage. In Memcast, data are stored as key value pair only. And in Redis, it supports key value pair as well as it has a rich set of data structures, including a string, list, set, hash, bitmap, and more. Memcast actually does not support replication. Redis provides redundancy and high availability with replication. Now, if you are already an AWS customer, you can use Amazon Elasticache, where you actually can take advantage both of Memcast and Redis. Let's talk about data sharding in distributed caching. As we know, in distributed caching, we can have many cache servers. So now we need to also think about a mechanism how we will distribute the load among different cache servers. We can think about simple mapping. We can use some sort of simple hash functions, like when the user ID will be 100, we will mod it by number of servers, like three, we will get some sort of key, and based on that, it will go to server one. Again, say for example, we have 102, user id we will mod by total number of servers which is three and the result is kind of zero then it will go to server index zero something like this this is simple and will work fine however when you work at a scale say for example we are dealing with thousands of servers and the servers are coming up and down frequently this simple hashing and map mapping mechanism does not work that's why we need some sort of robust solution we can take advantage of consistent hashing. So how does consistent hashing work? We have a separate video on this topic in the same playlist. I would encourage to watch that one because that topic is complex to explain in this video. There is an interesting term in this caching world, which is thundering hard or dogpiling effect. Let's think about a scenario. We have app server, we have our multiple cache servers or cache cluster, and we have our database. Say, for example, for some reason, one of our users' cache data is kind of invalidated or became corrupted. And that user is like very popular, like someone like Lionel Messi or Taylor Swift, something like this. So many customers, say, for example, millions of customers are requesting some information for that specific user's profile. What will happen? App server will first try to check the data in the cache and all the requests will see cache misses like the no data is available in the cache cache miss cache miss cache miss something like this right and finally our app server will send multiple calls to database and all of the calls will kind of be trying to read from database and update the cache and similar thing can happen when we are adding a new set of distributed cache servers. In the beginning, all the cache servers are empty and they will try to refill the cache at the same time for same sort of data. In this kind of scenario, where we might kind of like send a lot of requests to our database, we can create some unexpected spike or load to our database and eventually the DB might fail or we can see some availability drop. So to avoid these types of like thundering hard or dogpiling effect, we can take some precautions, say for example, cache locking or mutex. When one process is trying to update a cache index for some cache misses, it will lock that cache data so that other callers cannot update the same data. 
they just wait for the newest or refreshed data another thing could be exponential backup delays before calling data store rather than all the process calling the database at the same time we will add some exponential backup so that like one is trying the next try will start after some time eventually we will be able to resolve the thing with a fewer number of calls another thing could be cache preloading or pre-warming this is basically very well practiced when we add new set of cache servers we can write some sort of shell script or some scripting which will kind of preload the cache with available data which are aligned to other cache setup so these are kind of the important concepts in caching or distributed caching works hope it will help us to do some good in our interview thanks